I was back in uh, senior in high school, actually, and I was a beautiful, sunny day, and I was in a great mood. Uh, just left school, driving back in my little sports car. So I was driving back, and uh, it's really funny because you always wonder sometimes how things unfold. But uh, I remember about mm, a mile and a half before the accident scene, I got this really strange gut feeling, you know, uh, about something not so great was going to happen. And I thought, well, maybe I should pull over the side of the road. But anyways, like my hands were frozen on the wheel. It's like, no, just keep driving. And so that was strange. I didn't think much of it, except it was really weird. It's like, well, something doesn't feel right, uh, but I can't seem to let go of the wheel. So I kept driving. And sure enough, I got to this intersection that's on the main highway 101 which is along the Oregon coast. And this uh, big old truck crossed the center line and smashed into my sports car. But what happened was, as soon as the accident happened, it happened so quickly, it just had a, a flash of a second to barely register. And then the next thing I knew, of course, uh, I felt this tremendous impact on my head and my upper body. And uh, it was just, it was just like basically running into a brick wall if I could use something to kind of describe it. Tremendous impact. And then I was just kind of uh, in a daze and then uh, a stupor. And I remember putting my hand up to my forehead and blood was flying everywhere. And my forehead was all squishy. And I realized at that very moment uh, that I was going to die. I felt this like a hand on my shoulder and uh, I couldn't see anything at that time you know I was still slumped back and blood was squirting everywhere and this this hand on my shoulder you could feel it and you could feel the presence of this uh, spirit this being this angel I couldn't tell at that time and he said hey Rich we got you it's not a big these are the words of course they probably say them to to what you're thinking, you know, what, what your mind can absorb. But hey, Rich, uh, it's, it's nothing to worry about. We've got you. And uh, you've died thousands of times before, mm. is what, they, what, what I was told. So no problem. And, um, and at, that, at that moment, there was a huge, huge sense of realization instantly that that's right. And so then you just totally surrendered in the moment and just, you weren't worried. You know, you knew that uh, everything was the way it was supposed to be. Um, and so I was still in and out of it. Uh, I remember the uh, police officer came up and they kind of yanked me out of the car and I laid me down. I was bleeding and uh, all this kind of stuff. And I was basically in and out of consciousness. And, you know, and they took me to the hospital. And I remember bits and pieces of that. And I got to the hospital and uh, and I just bled out is what happened. They didn't have my blood type. They didn't have helicopters in, in those days to speak of like the life flight and all that kind of stuff. So I just lay there in the hospital and the doctors are, I can remember hearing the doctors say, well, he's not gonna make it. No. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, and so I just, lost consciousness of the doctors talking and I was in this beautiful space and I, and I was at that time that I was in that that beautiful mind space that all of a sudden I was just wasn't there anymore you know in the body uh, I was in this brilliant absolutely blinding white pure white I mean whiter than white and blinding and blinding light uh, I didn't go through any tunnel. I didn't see any relatives. I didn't do this or that. And uh, I was just in this tremendously blinding light, but it wasn't just light. It was, we describe it as love. It was the most unbelievable, overwhelming feeling of love that I've ever felt in my life. I mean, in any loving moments before that and after that, uh, you know, delivering my, child and this kind of stuff every, every moment is beautiful but does not even compare to the intensity and the complete volume endless 
volume of love that was there. It was you, you know, it was who we are. It was our, it was our level of consciousness that was just pure love flowing, just flowing. And, and it was so intoxicating, you know, it was like, this is, this is who we really are. This unbelievable love. I know and I probably repeat myself a lot and that's okay, but it, it, it was tremendous. I thought the light was so bright, it was going to burn my eyes out because, you know, I felt very much me and could, you know, could see parts of me. And so and then I, you know, realized it's, it's not blinding my eyes, you know, it's so bright, but um, it, it just flows through you. It's part of who you were, but yet I was separate, but I was part of it, but I was separate. So I was just there for quite a, seemed like quite a while. And, um, and then all of a sudden I, I heard a couple of impressions, voices, just like we're talking here. And kind of out of the whiteness came uh, eight beings, angels, I assume. Uh, I didn't know at the time. Uh, they didn't identify themselves as such. Uh, and they were also brilliant white, just a little off shade different. Uh, and so they kind of came out of the, the white light and... Uh, and spoke to me like we're talking, but there was no lips moving. And they were a little bit blurry. It wasn't crystal clear as far as facial features. You could see, definitely see the head and the eyes and, and the body and the shoulders. And, uh, but it wasn't a super clear as far as trying to make out exact features. But I, one thing I do know is uh, around their head and a little bit over the shoulders, was a little, <laughs> this is this is this is what, what it was, was a little tinge of gold, a little off color white that was a white gold, just a little bit down around the head, a little across the shoulders. And so they spoke to me for uh, who knows how long, but so they uh, they said, we want you to take a look at something. And uh, so I like watching you here, I, I watched my life and uh, like watching a movie, you know, every little bit. Of course, who knows, like I said, there's no time. So I watched my entire life uh, from birth till my death. And then they, they asked me, they said, uh, well, what do you think? <laughs> I said, what do I think? Uh, it was good. It was interesting. And then, you know, I did some bad things and did some, you know, a lot of good things. I like people. Uh, and I said, we don't care what, what your life was in that sense. We don't care. What matters is what you think. And so that was kind of reassuring in a way. It's like that, you know, they don't judge you. Uh, they just want you to review your life and then, and it's up to you what you think. So I, uh, I was there for a little while, and then that, right after that, I had the thought, it started to hit me. I was like, uh, you know, my folks are going to be fretting about me, and uh, so I started thinking, I want to, I wonder if I can see them. So I kept looking around and uh, trying to find the earth, and I looked, and I looked, and I looked, and I thought, and I looked, and I looked, and I, uh, I couldn't find the earth, I couldn't find anything just brilliant white light. And then finally, uh, something started to come into view and it was dark, uh, not like night so much, more like a marble that's, uh, or more like something that's shrouded kind of in a fog, a dark kind of fog, part of it. Uh, and um, and then that, that was the earth. And um, it was kind of dark. And, and maybe, I don't know why, maybe that's because it's a different density here or something like that. But I focused in on the earth and it was quite dark. And, uh, and I just kept thinking to myself, you know, they, they said that's the earth. But I, uh, I didn't come to the planet then. I didn't try to find my folks or, or something. I just realized, you know, that they would be missing me and, and uh, fretting about me kind of thing. And I felt sorry for that because I was in, they didn't realize I was in such a glorious place. Uh, 
the energy of that love is so powerful and these loving beings who just love you you're just part of them and uh and they're part of you and so the separation doesn't exist at the same level that it exists here where i was so then i asked him i says now you know uh, i want to stay i mean because it was so beautiful and i wasn't seeing buildings or anything like that it was just the beauty of being in that white light was just that was home that was the deepest home i could ever feel like it's like i'm where i i mean this is where this is my home you know and uh and it was so wonderful and so they said no you have a whole bunch of things to do yet so you can't stay yet but they said don't worry you'll be back and we know right to what you would call the second when your time is up when you're going to die because in that sense there's no time so you're already dead uh it just doesn't matter uh it's it, but you have a lot of things to do and so he came back and naturally uh, you know we got into the fishing business and charter business and had a bunch of families to make sure everybody made a living and all this kind of stuff so you know the life is busy and the next thing i knew is i woke up and uh puking in the hospital you know with the head all bandaged up and the, the accident had peeled my uh gone up here and peeled part of my skull uh so you know the <laughs> It was kind of a letdown for a minute coming back. I mean, uh, I was relieved that my parents would understand that I was okay. So that's that's actually my near death experience.